Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk, presented by the Visiting Nurse and Hospice for Vermont and New Hampshire. I'm your host, Anthony Knox, and unlike other Let's Talk presentations that I've done, uh, it's just going to be me today talking about uh, how to be successful with getting home health services set up for yourself or, or a loved one that you care for. Um, before we get going, um, please, you know, take a take a minute, uh, visit our website, vnhcare.org. It'll give you all kinds of uh, information regarding our services and, and how to get things set up. Uh, in addition to that, um, please don't hesitate to follow us on all of our social medias. Uh, in particular, uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can also find us on LinkedIn if, uh, if you so choose. Um, so I'm just going to dive right in today into the presentation. Uh, so again, um, how to be successful with home health services from the visiting nurse and hospice. Um, this presentation, uh, for anybody who attended, uh, I had done over at the Thompson Senior Center last week, and, and so I'm hoping that uh, uh, more people will have the opportunity to watch this presentation um, at their leisure. So uh, what are home health services? So, you know, that's obviously one of the biggest questions that, that people have. Um, home health services are, are skilled services within a person's home to be able to help them in the event that they've had some sort of an injury, an illness, uh, recently had surgery, or have complications related to a chronic condition. So um, as we will find as we go through this presentation, it's not specifically based on being hospitalized, uh, it could just be based on a chronic condition that you have that you need additional support within your home. And to help uh, with those um, uh, injuries or conditions and to help a patient get back to a baseline or to a non-taxing effort, um, which uh, for definition, uh, a taxing effort just means that it's, it's challenging for an individual to get in and out of their home. Um, not that they are completely homebound, but uh, our services are to try to help ensure that they have the ability to get in and out of the home much more easily. And we do that through skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, as well as um, some personal care assistance. Um, and the goal of, of the home health services are to supplement the supports that's provided by your primary uh, care team, which can include a uh, your uh, primary care provider. It can include uh, any special specialist that you would see. Um, our supports are just a supplement to that to, again, help you get back to baseline so that way you can get back to seeing the providers that you're used to seeing. Um, and again, um, you know, these services are just short term. It's not intended to be a, a long term um, service for an individual. Uh, we do have individuals that after one visit, they're all set and they don't need anybody else to come in, um, as evidenced by the conversation that I had with uh, Dr. Robert Welsh uh, a couple weeks ago uh, that you can also find on our YouTube page where he talks about his experience um, versus we have individuals who receive our uh, home supports for um, a much longer period of time. Uh, generally, the average is about 34 days from the time that we start providing services until uh, we close you out of the, the, um, the system for, for that period of service. So, um, but again, it, it's all uh, patient specific and based on, on the needs of the individual. And traditionally, there are going to be three situations in which home health services um, will be referred to the visiting nurse and hospice. Uh, the um, most regular situation is that an individual is going in for surgery uh, for some sort of medical condition. Uh, it could be uh, a wide variety of, of things. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be related to mobility. It can be related to um, another uh, condition. And once the person is going to be discharged from the hospital, uh, they, they would have those services set up. Um, but in, in a lot of situations as well, the individual uh, has a medical emergency and just needs to go to the hospital and it ends up becoming um, uh, a bigger thing, whether it's uh, an inpatient stay, whether it's surgery, whether it's um, just anything along those lines of um, uh, some some medical emergency and, and our services could be a benefit from there. And then in addition to that, I had already mentioned it, it could be related to 
um, some sort of chronic condition that you have. And based on your visit with your primary care provider or another specialist, they determine that um, our services may be beneficial to you and, and a referral can be uh, put in um, to the BNH. So, um, like I had said, in, in most situations, uh, an individual has a planned admission to the hospital. And prior to being admitted into the hospital, hopefully, um, you're having a conversation with your primary care provider or the provider that is going to be doing the procedure. Um, and you should be discussing what to expect, you know, before, during and after the procedure. Um, you know, that's just very good to, to take that time and have that, those conversations with, with the doctor. Um, but a big part of what the conversation should be is that would home health services through the VNH be appropriate for you based on what to expect after the procedure. You know, if there's going to be mobility challenges, if there's going to be other uh, physical limitations for an individual that, which again, could create a taxing effort to get in and out of the house, then it would be very beneficial for uh, a, a referral to be placed with the VNH. And so at that point, you just need to ask the primary care provider or the provider doing the procedure to submit a referral to us. Uh, rather the procedure is tomorrow or it's, you know, two months from now, getting that information to the VNH sooner rather than later allows us to get a, a heads up of, of what to expect, what, you know, what is coming down the pipe for, um, for services that need are going to need to be provided to this individual. It allows us the opportunity to, um, you know, work the schedule, make sure that, that we're going to have the supports available during that time and um, make it a very smooth transition from when the, the patient leaves the hospital to um, when our services come in. Um, however, nothing would be finalized for, the, for our services, uh, officially finalized for our services until we have the discharge summary uh, from the hospital. So that way we know specifically um, what supports are needed for that individual uh, upon discharge. Um, and again, just the, the sooner, the sooner, the better, um, it still allows us to, to get things set up. Um, again, prior to admission, please, um, have conversations with your family and friends who may be, uh, uh, able to provide some support to you. Um, our services work in cooperation with not only your primary care provider or the, the provider that's prov doing the um, procedure, um, but we also want to work with family and friends to ensure that uh, there's a well-rounded well support for everybody um, receiving our services um, and understanding that we are not going to be in the home every single day. We traditionally are able to uh, get in to the home uh, no later than 48 hours. Generally, it's the next day um, that we're able to come in and, and get things set up. But um, it's important to know that that we're not going to be there immediately. We're not going to, um, you know, be waiting for you when you get home from the hospital or anything like that. So. Um, and also understanding that our supports, uh, again, are not every day and generally uh, are about an hour every single day um, that we are there. The um, At the beginning, we are there more often, you know, a couple times a week, uh, and then it kind of tapers off to once a week based on how the patient is doing. And again, all of everything that I'm saying is just a generalized understanding of what happens with our services. Every single individual is... Um, uh, services are going to be determined based on their needs. Um, there may be situations where we might need to be in there, you know, every single day. Um, but uh, in general, it's a couple times a week for the first couple of weeks, and then it, it tapers off to about once a week based on um, patients' needs. Um, so once you are at the hospital and you are, um, you know, you've had your procedure, everything went well, um, now it's time to ensure that um, the next step in the process is 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 ready. That VNH services are aware of um, aware of you that that you we know that you need those services. Um, so ensuring that the referral has been placed to the VNH um, is is very important. Um, we need to make sure that we. Um, you know, we have all the best contact information for you so that way we can um, reach out to you, uh, your 
spouse, your friend, other family members, whomever it may be, um, whoever is going to be the person that we're going to need to speak to to get things set up. Um, also, make sure that you're following up with your family and friends that they know when you're going to be discharged. If they're a part of your, your treatment plan at that point, we'll be able to um, you know, uh, have everybody work together to ensure that the, the proper supports are, are set and ready for you. Um, and again, like I had, I had stated previously, we are not likely to be in your home on the same day, um, but we will be there within 48 hours. Generally, again, it's usually about 24 hours when we get to your home. Um, and again, the, the earlier the referrals place, the better, because then we can uh, plan accordingly with uh, on our end for, for schedules. Um, be ready for uh, our phone call so that way we can uh, get that initial appointment set up. Um, we are currently in the process of ensuring that we have one centralized number that you should be seeing on a caller ID. Um, but currently, um, sometimes it comes up as an 888 number, other times it comes up as an 802 number. Um, so just uh, the recommendation is just answer every phone call that, that comes through once you're, you're discharged from the hospital to make sure that, that we get a hold of you. Um, but if we try to call you, we will leave a message. Um, if we've been unable to reach you and, and you know, we're playing phone tag, uh, the phone number 888-300-8853 um, is the, the number to reach us and, and we can get you um, connected to uh, the scheduling team to set up that appointment. Um, and we do everything possible to, to meet the needs of the individual based on schedule, based on um, you know, what works best for other caregivers and, and things like that. Um, but we always are uh, greatly appreciative of any flexibility that is provided um, to get your services set up as quickly as possible. Um, for the first visit, uh, be prepared for it to be longer than, than other visits, specifically because there are assessments and additional paperwork that will need to be completed um, during that first visit. Um, and is very important uh, for, at all visits, but even you know most most notably at the first visit, to ask a ton of questions. Ask what to expect during during these services. Ask what um, should be done in between uh, visits. Um, just be aware of of everything, and and don't don't feel like any question is stupid. We we want to ensure that you have the best understanding, and that we've provided as much information to you as humanly possible, so that way you are for the services that you're going to receive from the VNH. Uh, in between visits from the VNH, um, always ensure that you are completing whatever is has been asked by, by your therapy uh, team, whether it's your skilled nurse, your PT, your OT, your uh, speech therapist, whatever the case may be, um, work on what they ask you to work on and, and do it as it's been instructed, no more, no less. Um, if you feel as though you could be doing more, then, you know, have that conversation with, with uh, the individual that, that has assigned you the quote unquote homework um, to explain that you, you feel like you could do more. Um, the other piece of it, too, is that uh, you can always uh, call our, our triage team to ask if it's appropriate to be doing more um, uh, to help with your, your recovery. Um, and uh, and they're available uh, to to answer any of those immediate concerns for any other uh, you know questions or concerns that you may have that aren't urgent uh, just you know start a um, start a notepad with with questions and be ready to ask uh, once uh, the individual comes into your home um, and uh, our um, our services are available 24 seven and you will be given all the information of of how to access the 24 hour um, uh, services. Um, but as always, if it is an actual medical emergency, please just dial 911 um, because that is the easiest and best way to get the, the supports that you need. Now, as we, we discussed, there are sometimes you go to the uh, emergency room because you uh, you have something going on and, and now we have an unplanned uh, admission um, to the hospital. And, you know, again, when you get to the emergency room, obviously the number one concern is to, to get you stabilized and ensure that everything is okay. Um, the next step should be to ask if, if home health supports would be appropriate based on, on what you're, you're experiencing. Now, 
um, in, in several situations. I mean, you may be going into emergency surgery, you may be uh, hospitalized because of something that's going on. So there may be some additional time. But even in the event that you go to the emergency room, they're able to, you know, bandage you up in, in a couple of hours. Um, it's still appropriate to ask about um, uh, our home health services and if they would be appropriate for you. Um, it's still the same process. There would still need to be uh, a referral that is placed. Um, and it, we just have to ensure that there is some sort of skilled need for the patient uh, to initiate care, which, you know, again, could be wound care, could be uh, ensuring your safety around areas or activities of daily living. Uh, it could be fall prevention. It, I mean, there, the list is, is long as far as what could be a reason why home health services would be appropriate to come in and rather you speak with the doctor, um, a nurse or um, a case manager or a care manager, uh, somebody should be able to answer these questions for you and and determine if if supports are are necessary or um, required or anything like that. Um, and again, the, the worst case scenario is a referral gets placed and based on our assessment, there may not be a need, but at least um, it doesn't hurt to see if the, the services could be available to you. Um, and again, it's it's the same process like, like I've talked about before. If you were uh, a planned admission into the hospital, um, it's just uh, now it's it, it was un, it was an unplanned situation as to why you may need these services. And then the, the last of the three reasons that I had explained, um, you know, in the event that you're visiting with your primary care provider or uh, another specialist that you see, and it's determined that there may be, um, you know, some supports in the home that, that would be beneficial for the individual, or you or, or one of your caregivers uh, is speaking with the provider and says, you know, A, B, and C, and, and it's kind of determined that maybe some, some home supports would be beneficial for you. In either event, uh, your, your provider would need to uh, still per, to complete a referral to be sent to the VNH um, for everything to be reviewed and determine if the VNH services are appropriate. So um, again, in all three situations, their uh, assigned order from the doctor still needs to be placed uh, for a referral to happen, but um, the three primary ways to get said supports in place would be, um, you know, a planned admission to the hospital, an unplanned uh, arrival to a hospital, or, you know, just based on your, your routine uh, appointments with your primary care provider or specialist, uh, determining that the need may be there. And um, if there are any questions from any of the people that are, are viewing currently, I'm uh, more than happy to, to answer those for you. Um, uh, I know a lot of times there are, uh, this, as soon as the presentation's done, that's when all the questions happen. Um, and with that, um, uh, here at the, the last slide here, um, my contact information is uh, available. Um, please don't hesitate to, to reach out if you happen to have any questions related to uh, our services. Um, and if I don't have the answer for you, I will uh, ensure that I can get that answer for you. So um, it's not looking like there are uh, currently any questions. So um, I do want to thank uh, everybody who was uh, watching this live. And I do thank everybody who, who watched it after the fact uh, on demand on YouTube. Um, you know, again, feel free to, to reach out if there are any questions um, uh, regarding our services, how to get our services set up. And uh, um, for, for everybody else, um, just so you're aware, on uh, June 29th, which is two weeks from today, um, uh, yes, uh, let me, there is the information again on, on how to uh, reach me. Um, and uh, for anybody uh, else, you know, uh, you can uh, just rewind the video at, at this point and you'll be able to, to make sure that you get that, that information. Um, so as I was saying, uh, on uh, June 29th uh, at noon, I will be um, uh, 
uh, doing a presentation with uh, Dr. Tawana from uh, Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center regarding uh, Alzheimer's disease. And um, I encourage everybody to, um, to join in and, and listen to that presentation. Um, and uh, uh, Sally, you, you're welcome for uh, reposting the, uh, the information on the screen there. And so uh, on that note, uh, again, I want to thank everybody for, for watching this presentation, and uh, I hope to see uh, a bunch of you at our presentation on the 29th. Have a great day. Thank you.